Hello, everyone. There's strength and faith for everyone. As strong as you care to make it, find new faith, new strength for your life. Worship in the church of your choice. and the wasteland shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice, even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the excellence of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the excellency of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make the firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He shall come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For water shall burst forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of jackals, where each lay, there shall be grass with reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast go up on it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. 
and the ransom, ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Sometimes on our journey, our feet get heavy, our shoulders feel burdened, and our hearts seem slow. Sometimes in the preparation of celebrating Christmas, the busyness overwhelms us and we get lost in the doing, the planning, and the running. Children are a bundle of joy during Christmas. They are full of anticipation and are constantly asking, how long before Christmas? The Dutch, centuries ago, recognized that Christmas is a joy for children and much of their preparation was for the children to enjoy the season. Children rarely lose the sense of why all the bustle of Christmas, but adults often become overwhelmed and what we, and what we lose is a sense of why. Why do we do all of this? Why is this journey necessary? And the answer is simple, for the joy of it. We forget the joy when we get caught up in the to-do lists. We forget the joy when we worry more about how things will look than connecting with others. Matthew tells us that when John asked if Jesus was the one to come, Jesus responded by saying, look around you. Our call in this Advent journey is to look around us, to see the one who comes, already at work among us and to celebrate that presence with joy. We light the candles of peace and hope and joy to light our way as we journey. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Let us take the children with us, that God may teach us the ways of peace, hope, and joy.
We have uh, two scripture readings today. The first one is Psalm 146, 5 to 10. Happy is he who has God of Jacob for his help. Those hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in it them, who keep truth forever, who ex executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food for, to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens their eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relives the fatherless and the widow, but the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. You, O God, O Zion, to all generations. And the next one is Luke 1, 39, Luke 1, 39 to 56. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to the city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greetings of Mary that the babe leaped into her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, blessed are you among the women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord shall come to me? For indeed, as so soon as the voice of your greeting sounds in my ears, the babe leaped into my womb with joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there it will be a fulfillment of these things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejected in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maid servant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy in his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thorns and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her house. And this is the mighty and powerful words.
Hallelujah. How many have joy? I got joy. Joy? Got joy? I like to, I like to sit back and listen to it, and slow down life. How many of you like to slow down life? It's hard. It's hard. Life's. This week I was doing a little work and uh, down in Brazil and walking in an alley behind the house and I saw someone coming and I thought I'll just be nice and step away so they won't run over me. <laughs> And I stepped up on a little muddy hill. You know the rest of the story. Next thing I knew, I thought, this is going to hurt. <laughs> and I knocked the wind out of myself on my back. I didn't know my throat could hurt two days later. Yeah, I think I'm getting better. I don't think I broke anything. And I told my wife about it. I said, nobody was there to laugh. <laughs> what a wasted mishap. <laughs> but I think I'm okay. Wow. There's an old adage. You cannot give what you don't have. Let each of us recognize that everyone doesn't share the joy of Advent as the coming of Christ. A lot of our culture, or our culture as a whole, has repackaged Christmas as gift giving, and I don't know why they would celebrate it anyway, but but they do, and we see it in commercials. And one of the most humorous is the young couple, I have a present for you. And he takes her outside, and there's two vehicles. One's, what, an SUV, and the other's a truck. I love it. She runs to the truck. <laughs> but but that's, 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 that's Christmas. That's how it's projected. And we're all guilty of it. We ask our grandkids or we ask our children, what do you want for Christmas? And we expect a long, a long list. And we hear the songs, Christmas, the most wonderful time of the year. And again, to some people, it's not. I was, when we were at uh, the garrison Wednesday and had a wonderful time together, the prime timers, and I wasn't eavesdropping. I wasn't eavesdropping. I was walking to the buffet, and there were a, a couple men sitting there, and I just overheard I was not eavesdropping. One was talking about, I'm, I'm trying to have a relationship with my brother. This guy looks about 40, and it's just not working out. Now, he's talking about this at Christmas time. Now, multiply that by thousands or millions. I'm trying to do something, and it's just not working out. And some people are haunted by Christmas for lots of different reasons. It's irrelevant. They just are. Christmas is not a wonderful time. It's not a joyous time. They tell us uh, among people that work in the mental health profession, uh, uh, interventions go up. And I can understand that. And as one person says that they're haunted by the ghost of Christmas past. And that could be anything from going back to childhood. And we know everybody doesn't have an uh, idyllic Childhood, there, there can be hurts, not only in childhood, but adulthood. Lots of adult movies about Christmas time, a lot of them. And generally, they keep focusing on a reoccurring theme. There's been a rupture in the family, and they're trying to put it back. One of my wife's favorite, and I forget the title, uh, Ed Asner stars in it. I believe it's the one, and I think he's dying. And the kids doesn't, don't know it yet. And so he's trying to put it all back together before he goes. So that's some of the themes that remind us that sometimes memories that people think, well, I've done away with or gotten under control, they resurface year after year. And the response is, bah humbug. And there are those that uh, they shouldn't. Uh, make an effort to rain upon everybody else's Christmas parade and party. And we've met people that would make Ebenezer Scrooge look like they are ringing the bell for the Salvation Army. And we did have a Salvation Army pot stolen here recently. Maybe Scrooge needed it. But maybe, maybe if we would take time to digest the story of Advent, 
slow down a little bit. We could gain a perspective that can generate joy. History of mankind is not joyful. Somebody that had a lot of time on their hands, probably a university professor, a lot of time on their hands, said in the history of mankind, he or she can only chart a little over 200 years of peace. Okay, yeah, we got it. We understand that. The, the joy of Advent doesn't begin with joy. It begins with sin. And the future doesn't look promising. I mentioned that last week. Adam and Eve decided that for whatever reason, that they would disobey the commandment of God. Just one. Just one. And here we are. There's no joy that can be detected in the early part of the scriptures. None. This is what's going to happen. Anyone need a refresher course? The earth's not going to bring forth abundance. Women, sorry, you're going to have pain in childbirth. Men, you're going to work by the sweat of your brow until you both die. Let's sing a song of joy now. One, two. <laughs> Let's get the choir up here. No, we'd probably sing a song of repent. We'd probably be looking at, where's the joy? Where's the hope? Well, the scripture reminds us. The scripture reminds us that there's joy coming. Now let me back up just a second. That Genesis 3.15, I'm going to put an enmity. I'm going to put this disagreement. This, it's like feeling in your, who you are, your, can I say gut? You're not going to like the devil. and He's certainly not going to like you. And I'm going to put enmity, hatred between you and his seed. And he's going to bruise your head or your heel, but you're going to bruise his head. That's the first, that's the first promise that we can trace through that God gave humanity. I'm going to take care of your sin. He didn't tell them how long. He didn't tell them this is going to be a long drawn out process, but it's in the future. How would you like to live in the future? Well, children do. A year to a child is like a century. A year to an adult is, where'd that go? You realize this is December already? I, I just thought yesterday I broke my last New Year's resolution, and that was January the 2nd. But God unveils the characteristics, the manner of birth of a Savior across time, almost three millennium, 3,000 years. Not one person, not any part of the law, not any one of the prophets is entrusted with telling the entire story. If we date ourselves, it's like uh, the old radio series, The Perils of Pauline, or The Lone Ranger. Just stay tuned next week to see what's going to happen. So we begin with Genesis, I just read, and we trace the story through the Psalms. We find a scripture in Numbers. We find scriptures in Deuteronomy. And then we keep going and finding one here and one there. We find one in Isaiah. Something's going to happen. From Jesse. The shoot, we used this last week, will come up from the stump of Jesse. Well, we know what a stump means. The tree's been cut down. That just means Jesse's past. And from his root a branch will come. Look what's going to happen. The Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. There's some joy coming. This is not material. This is a gift, but it's not material. When we say, what do we want for Christmas? What do we usually respond with? Some new gadget, toy, something. God responds with intangible. As we go through the Christmas season, we'll find people, what the most important thing they want is togetherness and peace in the family one more time. God's given some hope here. Hope comes joy, because when you recognize there's hope, how can it not bring joy to you? There's hope. And a smile should come on your face. We're going, we're not going to look at all the scriptures. There are several of them. 
And then we go on a little bit further. Micah, this is the last one. And he talks about the city of Bethlehem. You're small. You're small among the, the cities of Judea. But out of you, out of you will come one who will be the ruler over Israel, whose origins are from the old and from the ancient times. People that understood the book of Daniel would have understood this passage. It's another layer we call Messiah's coming. Messiah's coming. That should bring joy. When we think of right now, yes, yes, the world's in ferment. Great Britain just had an election, and one side stunned. <laughs> the other side's applauding. Yay! The other side's stunned. And that's how elections go. They're wondering, what's next? But joy, it comes from God, is eternal. It comes from within. You've got something you can't take away from me. Or I should say, you have something no one else can take away from you. We sing the song, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Jesus alluded to that in one aspect of scripture. He says, don't fear the one that can destroy the body. That's all they can do. You need to fear the one that can what? Destroy the body and the soul in the lake of fire. Fear him. Kind of puts things in perspective, doesn't it? We want longevity of life. Anyone does it? We want it. Live long and prosper. We want to live out our days long, healthy, and enjoy. Grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren. The Old Testament, the psalmist called a quiverful. A quiverful. Wow. Wow. But we have another one, one more we're going to look at. Maybe. And then a virgin. Isaiah speaks of it. The Lord's going to give you a sign. A virgin will conceive. She'll have a child. She'll give birth. And you will call him Emmanuel. God with you. This indicates the divinity of Jesus. They understood who this would be. That's why in the scriptures, when Jesus was ministering, they would ask him, tell us, yes or no, are you Messiah? Well, they had ulterior motives for that. But they understood some of the workings of Jesus. He's got some of the attributes of the Messiah. We need to know. John asked a question while he was in prison. He said his fellow workers had asked Jesus, tell us, are you the one or should you look for or should we look for another? Well, you go back and tell John what you see. Go back and tell him what you see. The deaf are receiving their hearing. The lame's walking. The poor have the gospel, the good news preached to them. Some are receiving their dead back. Go back and tell him what you see. So hope generates joy. Regardless of the circumstances, we can revel in the confidence. Think of Job. Who thinks of Job during Christmas? What's the matter with Job? He's got a few problems. We flip open past third, fourth chapter of Job. What do we find? We find a man who loves God sitting among ashes, scraping his boils with a piece of pottery, trying to find relief. Friend staring at him, saying, repent, you've sinned. His wife has even said, no offense to women, curse God and die. That's where we find Job. That's a good Christmas message, curse God and die. No. He told him, you're all talking foolish. Job said, in the midst of adversity, Physical diversity. For what was the challenge? If you remember the story of Job. Job lost possessions. He still worshipped God. And what was the challenge? Ah, that's light, God. Touch his flesh and he'll curse you to your face. God accepted the challenge. No, he won't. You can't take his life. So that's where we find Job. In a horrible, unhealthy position. And this is what he says. For I know 
that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. And also he would say, though the skin worms will destroy my body, in my flesh I shall see the Lord. This is a man in the middle of a health crisis. And he had hope. I don't know if he had much joy. We'll, we'll, we'll give him that much. But he had hope. The psalmist Roy wrote, Joy, for I know that my Redeemer lives. We got that. Should have put that up. Let those who put their trust in thee rejoice. Can you rejoice? Do you trust God? Can you rejoice? Let them shout for joy. We've heard the jokes about we Methodists. You've heard them. Some of the jo- one of the jokes are, you know you're a Methodist when we singing stand up, stand up for Jesus and we've remained seated. Shout for joy because you defend them. God's defending us. Let them that have love, that love thy name, be joyful in you. Do you have joy? Regardless of circumstances, do you have joy? It's hard. It's hard. In the New Testament, we, we read of joy. It's, it, was, it was a long reading, but it's necessary. The part we want to zero in. It's really a, a song of prayer. Mary, if you remember, at the other side of the Red Sea, she sings a song. I don't think I've ever heard this put to music, but this is a prayer. This is a song. Blessed is she who believed. There will be fulfillment in those things which are told her from the Lord. And then what Mary's saying, my soul magnifies thee. Magnifies the Lord of my spirit has rejoiced. There's joy there. The angel visited Mary and asked and told her, you're a chosen vessel. She didn't say, I don't want to be. (laughs) But she pondered, how could these things be? Well, if it pleases the Lord, go ahead. My spirits rejoice. He has, he has regarded the lowly state. He's looked upon me. He's looked upon you. It doesn't matter if you're in the Hamptons, in the life of luxury, or wondering where your next meal is. God's looking in on you. God cares about you. He's wanting to do something for you and raise you above your current estate. Now, maybe most of us in here are not pondering our next meal, all jokes aside, is it going to be gruel? Gruel's oatmeal, folks. <laughs> Runny oatmeal. I didn't know that when I was growing up. My dad said, eat that, boy. It's good for you. I didn't. But seriously, no, we're, we're not. But even those circumstances, God wants to raise you up. Even in joy, there's more. How can you, and the psalmist said, how can you unfold all the mercies of God? You can't. You can't. Many of you Bible scholars have read the scriptures and maybe pa- a certain passage over and over and over, and then one day you read it and something else jumps out at you. Martin Luther was one of those. He was struggling with having faith in God. He was trying to understand it. And he taught the book of Romans. That's like, that's like Conway owning a garage and wondering how an engine works. I know how to fix them, but I don't know how they work. That's where where Martin Luther was. And he read across Romans chapter 1, verse 17, and he was teaching the book of Romans. And the second part of the verse, the just shall live by faith. And he said it was like the heavens opened up and a light illuminated it. The just shall live by faith. Changed his life. Here was a religious man. We'd call him a a fervent Christian, a teacher of the word. And God said, I've I've got more to show you. Wow. I'm rejoicing. He's regarded my lowly state. He regarded Luther. Luther would be considered, uh, how would we say, a man in the community. God touched him. You need more. How many of you need more? I could use more. I don't mean money. How can we use more? For behold, henceforth, from now on, through all the generations, will call Mary blessed. Will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. 
Look what she said. Joy. Joy. That's what we as Advent Christians should have. Joy. The joy of knowing Christ. Yes, there's joy in helping. There's joy in giving. But the joy of, of God has visited you. I've used this before when the disciples came back and said, Lord, even the devils respond to us. What did Jesus say to them? Well, that's good, but you need to rejoice more because your name is written in heaven. He tried to get their eyes from, oh, this is great stuff. Man, I'm really in the way. Man, I know nobody's there. Jim's here over here. Man. <laughs> I don't know why I looked over there. Man, we got something going. Lord, you know, it's like bumping. You know, high five. Jesus said, you missed the point, man. I don't know if Jesus would have said man. <laughs> you missed the point, brethren. Rejoice. God's got your name. Hallelujah. God's got your name. God's got your name. Great revival song. Here's your name written up there. And there's lots of, lots of plaques, but that's also a song. Here's your name written up there. Look what Job said about creation. We're going to wrap up now. To that were there, it's the earth. It's, it's this King James English, so it's kind of hard to follow. But Job's being asked, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Where were you when the morning stars sang together and the sons of God did what? Shouted. God created the heavens and the earth, and God saw that it was good, and the angels are rejoicing. God separated the light from the darkness, and it was good, and the angels rejoiced. We keep right on going, and then God said, let us make man, and he did, and the angels rejoiced. Tell me about it, Job. Tell me where all this excitement came from. God is revealing himself, and it's exciting. Wow. Our challenge, we have two. To start closing. Do we have the peace and joy that Jesus offers? You call an altar call if you want, but we're, we're calling it a decision. Do you have it? Not fake. Do you have the joy? Times can be hard. Anybody ever raise children? Were times ever tough? I know there was an episode of, I wasn't a big fan of, uh, of uh, you know that one show in the 80s, uh, he just flew off out the window. It'll come back this, this side. Roseanne. When one episode was, we're short this week. So she mailed the light bill to the water company. And the water bill to the light company. And that gives us time. <laughs> Anybody been there? Oh, I have. I'll just be honest. Yeah, I've raised children. I worked in the 70s and 80s. Been through where uh, 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 you didn't have a lot of hours. You were laid off and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, did you have joy? I had hope. God would take care of me. And he did. He did. Do we have that? And so, if not, what do we need to do to find it? Because if we find it, we can truly celebrate Christmas. We can really celebrate Christ. This is about the birth of Christ. This is about the, the answer of God to humanity's plight. You need your sins taken care of. You need that hatred. Variance. We just go on with all the adjectives which just means sin. You need it removed. Cleansed from you. And then what Advent. Advent reminds us of our need for Jesus. What really interested me several, several years ago. I think about six, seven years ago. I went to Hong Kong on a missionary trip. And it was early November, and they were gearing up for Christmas. Now, these are people that are practicing Confucianism and Buddhism, and they are celebrating Christmas. That's interesting. All over the world. That was part of my prayer. All over the world, people are celebrating Christmas and have no clue that Christ is, that's Christmas. The world needs Christ because it changes the individual. The Holy Spirit has the power, as the Scripture teaches, of sanctification to change the way in which we live and think and act. 
For one of the scriptures we used previously is from the book of Isaiah. People, what people? All of us. But he's talking about his people. The people are walking in great darkness. And they've seen a great light. They're living in a land of darkness. But a light has shined into the darkness. Do you know Christ? Do you know Jesus? Let's, let's consider the challenge as we listen to Joy Has Dawned Upon the World.